Hello friends, Jim here. Welcome to Science Talk. I want to discuss with you an article that was uh, posted on uh, University of Alaska's Fairbanks uh, website. And talks about what's going on in the Arctic Ocean. New research explains Atlantification of the Arctic Ocean. New research by an international team of scientists explains what's behind a stalled trend in Arctic Ocean sea ice loss since 2007. The findings indicate that stronger declines in sea ice will occur when an atmospheric feature known as the Arctic Dipole reverses itself in its recurring cycle. The many environmental responses to the Arctic Dipole are described in a paper published online today in the journal Science. The analysis helps explain how North Atlantic water influences Arctic Ocean climate, a process scientists call Atlantification. The research is led by my friend, P Professor Igor Polyakov of the University of Alaska Fairbanks College of Natural Science and Mathematics. He is also affiliated with the International Arctic Research Center at UAF. Well, okay, IARC comes under uh, CNSM, but Igor is at IARC. That's kind of where he's, he's mainly, that, that's his, that's his home. <laughs> so, um, I guess a split in hairs there, but he, he's, uh, he's more associated, he's more affiliated with the IARC, uh, so forth. Co-authors include Andre uh, Panushkov, research assistant professor at IARC, Uma Bhatt, uh, atmospheric science professor at the UAF Geophysical Institute in UAF College of Natural Science and Mathematics, She's also at IARC. Uh, she, she's a really uh, excellent scientist, a really nice person too. Uh, and researchers from Massachusetts, Washington State, Norway, and, and Germany. And uh, there's a photo taken by Igor, the research uh, vessel Akademik uh, Troyoshnikov uh, sails in the Arctic Ocean on a 2021 science cruise in the Nansen and Amundsen basins. Uh, observational system program. A science cruise aboard the U.S. Coast Guard Icebreaker Healy began in August 2023 to research in the same area. So they're they're out there cruising, uh, getting more data. So Igor says that this is a multidisciplinary view on what's going on in the Arctic and beyond. Our analysis covered the atmosphere, ocean, ice, changing continent and changing biology in response to climate change. A wealth of data, including direct instrumental observations, reanalysis products, and satellite information going back several decades, shows that the Arctic Dipole alternates in an approximately 15-year cycle and that the system is probably at the end of the present regime. Now that's a, this is interesting here. Let's, let's highlight that. The Arctic Dipole alternates in an approximately 15-year cycle and that the system is probably at the end of the present regime. Now, I did a video on the Arctic Dipole and that what really led to its discovery and description and subsequent description based on analysis was how the changing of where the high and the low pressure systems how their positional changing influence whether or not sea ice was pushed out the Fram Strait or contained within the basin. And uh, I had a small part in that, uh, you know, some of the sea ice work I did. And, you know, we noticed that, hey, sometimes it goes out Fram, sometimes it doesn't. And then working with the atmospheric scientists, we kind of said, oh, gee, this seems to be a, a bit of a, you know, a correlation going on. And 
the original paper describing uh, the Arctic Dipole was published in 05 with John Walsh as the, uh, you know, the lead uh, author, the lead scientist on it. So now what they're saying is that the Arctic Dipole influence is more so. In the Arctic Dipole's present positive regime, which scientists say has been in place since 2007, Okay, so the original paper came out in 05. So we'll probably, so the paper at the time we we're doing the analysis, which goes back into the late, uh, and uh, to, to the mid to late 1990s, the dipole was, was most likely in the negative state. And, you know, we published a paper and then we see a shift and there's been enough time elapsed to see it perhaps revert back to the other situation. So the positive regime, this high pressure centered over the Canadian sector of the Arctic produces clockwise wind, low pressure is centered over the Siberian Arctic and features counterclockwise wind. Well, that's typical for atmospheric systems. This wind pattern drives upper ocean currents with year-round effects on regional air temperatures, atmosphere, ice, dash, ocean heat exchanges, sea ice drifts, and exports. That's export. That's what I was referring to when I was talking about does ice get pushed out the Fram Strait or not, and along with ecological consequences. So the authors write that water exchange between the Nordic seas and the Arctic Ocean are critically important for the state of the Arctic climate system and that the sea ice decline is a true indicator of climate change. Right there. And we're losing the sea ice. We're also losing the multi-year ice. Okay, here's another photo that Igor took uh, aboard the uh, research vessel and uh, pulling up some scientific uh, equipment Probably, I uh, can't really tell here. Looks like it might be some ROVs here. Can't really quite tell what, what, what they are. Probably a CTD in there somewhere. In analyzing uh, oceanic responses to the wind patterns since 2007, the researchers found decreased flow from the Atlantic Ocean into the Arctic Ocean through the Fram Strait east of Greenland. Okay, east of Greenland along with increased Atlantic flow into the Barents Sea, located north of Norway and western Russia. So it's not like the flow is totally decreasing through Fram, it's just a matter of from which channel that, it, that you're looking at. The new research refers to these alternating changes in the Fram Strait and the Barents Sea ice as a switch gear mechanism caused by the Arctic dipole regimes. The researchers also found that counterclockwise winds from the low pressure region under the current positive Arctic dipole regime drive fresh water from Siberian rivers into the Canadian sector of the Arctic Ocean. This westward movement of fresh water from 07 to 2021 helped slow the overall loss of sea ice in the Arctic compared to 92 through 06. So let's say when we were doing our research, we were in the, obviously in the negative aspect. And you know, by the time the paper got published, the original paper in 05, the freshwaters layer depth increased, making it too thick and stable to mix with the heavier salt water below. The thick layer of fresh water prevents the warmer salt water from melting sea ice from the bottom. Whether it prevents it or limits it, I think, you know, needs to be fine-tuned. The authors write that the switchgear mechanism regulating inflows of subarctic waters has profound impacts on marine life. It can lead to potentially more suitable living conditions for subarctic boreal species near the eastern part of the Eurasian Basin relative to its western part. We are beyond the peak of the currently positive Arctic Dipole regime 
and at any moment it could switch back again, uh, Polyakov said. This could have significant climatological repercussions, including a potentially faster pace of sea ice loss across the entire Arctic and sub-Arctic climate systems. So we have a possible explanation for why there seems to be a slowdown in Arctic sea ice loss. Some places, there, you know, the ice is, uh, is approaching median levels for the past 30, 40 years. Other places it is, you know, still being lost, albeit a slower rate. Still does not change your overall uh, trend for the last four or five decades, namely that the extent is decreasing, the onset of ice is later in the year, the melting of ice is earlier in the year, sea ice volume is decreasing, meaning that multi-year ice is being lost, and especially old multi-year ice is being lost. Now there's another thing to you know, tied into this is, and we hear this, you know, you see this on social media. Everyone is fixated on blue ocean event. Well, it depends. What is, the, what is a blue ocean event? Is it absolutely no ice anywhere? Or is it what, what was the, uh, the I, I guess to say, traditional definition or the accepted definition of less than 1 million square uh, kilometers of ice. Well, if you use the latter, the traditional definition, that's already happened. Now, I got some pushback uh, from people saying, I'm an idiot, this, that, and the other thing. And what people don't understand is that, you know, if you just rely on satellite data, satellite data can not give you the full picture. To form sea ice is a bunch of stages that happen. The first stage usually is the formation of what's called grease ice. It's basically slush. Now, slush still has a reflectance uh, aspect to it versus open water. So a satellite that's cruising over, you know, over the Arctic Ocean is going to take its image and it's going to re it, and it will appear that, oh, the, the sea ice extent is over this way, and you can calculate what the, how many square kilometers is the extent, and so on. In other words, the satellite, even with the, uh, the SAR satellites and so on, and you know you can, you can change the aperture, you can change what frequency it looks at, but when you do so, you lose other aspects. So you try to find the middle ground. And basically, it is not always, uh, in fact, it can't really differentiate between slush and ice. And so the slush, by including that, gives the appearance that the sea ice extent is greater than it is. This is where you need to have in C2 measurements. And that's where I came in. <laughs> so I would be, you know, seeing, seeing the extent, oh, the... The slush goes up to about here, and now we have a transition to frazzle ice and you know pack ice and pancake ice and so on and so forth. We can actually get onto ice, something that you can actually stand on. So, so you need to keep that in mind. But this is really interesting of what they're saying is that so that the dipole is more than just simply governing whether sea ice is pushed out the fram or not, but is having these other impacts, obviously on what would be basically the halo climb, uh, perhaps uh, putting a tampering effect on vertical mixing uh, with the uh, riverine uh, input uh, and so forth. So, so this is interesting. As I said, this is something that was, you know, has, it's not even 20 years old in the literature. So we're still waiting for it to go through some cycles here uh, to see um, what the overall trend would be. So why the sea ice reduction seem to be slowing or, or you know, 
zeroing out in some places. Well, it appears the, uh, the Arctic Dipole holds the key to that. So um, just wanted to bring that to you. And uh, yet another aspect of how complicated the Arctic Ocean Basin, atmosphere and ocean, ice, really are. It's a small area, but it's very complicated with the implications for the climate planet-wide. Thank you for your time.